There has been a very major piece of research done recently in Oxford uh, by the Society for Mind and Anthropology, or Anthropology and Mind, who did a 1.9 million pounds they spent on this research. As far as I remember, there were over 60 academics involved in this research from all over the world. So this was a major piece of scientific research in the realm of human psychology and anthropology. And after many years, they concluded that the belief in God, the religious belief, and the belief in afterlife is not something that is taught by our parents. It is something instinctive and natural in the human being. That in fact, the very human thought process itself is shaped by religious values. This is very significant. Because of course, this agrees with exactly what Islam has been saying, that every human being is born upon the fitrah. In other words, every human being, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, is naturally inclined to worship God alone. And as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is only our parents that make us diverge away from that natural inclination to single out God for worship and make us followers of different religions or no religion at all. So this is the nature of the human being. And it's interesting that this very extensive piece of research has confirmed that. And we all have instincts. Animals, by the way, operate on instinct. What makes the human being different from the animal is that the human being has reason. We have the ability to reason. Whereas animals, they rely upon instincts. And we have also what we call reflex action. So, for example, if I pick up something that is hot, mashallah, not Quran, but something that is very hot, I don't have to think there's no process in my brain saying, this is very hot, I must drop it. No. You do it instinctively. You drop it instinctively. This is a reflex action. This is something that is not rational. This is just something that is part of our intrinsic makeup. In order to keep on holding something hot, you have to train yourself. You have to learn to bypass your normal instinctive, which a human being can do, we can learn to bypass those reflex actions and force ourselves to hold a hot coal. This is unique to human beings. Consciousness. That ability to use our mind to override our instinctive reactions. However, this instinct is there. And the belief in God is instinctive. What is the proof? What is the proof of this? It's very interesting that one of the, what we could call the high priests of atheism, Richard Dawkins, was recently on a, a TV show. And he was being interviewed. And that he was saying in this interview, you know, most Christians, they don't know anything about their Bible. They just don't know about their book. So the interviewer said, okay, that's interesting. You believe, Mr. Dawkins, you're a big fan of Darwin, aren't you? Of course, yes, Darwin's very important. Um, could you tell me the full title of his book, The Origin of the Species? And Richard Dawkins started going, um, uh, mm, oh, God. He said, he said, oh, God. So he found that this atheist, or this renowned atheist, is being put in a difficult situation. He doesn't know the answer, and he ends up going, oh God, like, oh God, help me, what am I going to say? And this is a guy who says he doesn't believe in God.
But you're you saying wanna... they're not Christians, even if they think of themselves as Christian. You you know what they are, even even though they tell you. I'm, I'm not. I'm not presenting my opinion here. This press release is offered to people to look down it and say, look, these people who, who call themselves Christians actually don't read the Bible, don't go to church, don't believe Jesus was the Son of God, don't even know what the first book of the New Testament is. But, but Richard, it's if up I, if to I... you to make up your mind whether you think they're Christian. Don't ask me. My opinion is not relevant. Richard, if I, if I said to you, what is the full title of The Origin of Species? I'm sure you could tell me that. Yes, I could. Go on, then. On the origin of species, uh, with, oh, God, uh, on the origin of species, um, there, there is a subtitle the, uh, um, with respect to the, pre the preservation of favoured races in the fight, in the struggle for You're life. the high oh, pope not, of Darwinism. Not bad, and, actually. And yeah, you, I'd give you, him you, some justice. But, I mean, but if you asked people who believed in evolution what that question, and then you came back and said 2% got it right. It would terribly easy for me to go, they don't really believe it after all. It's just not fair to ask people these questions. They self-identify as Christians, and I think you should respect... ...who says he doesn't believe in God. And actually, this is instinctive. This is instinctive. Allah gives the example in the Qur'an. Allah gives the example in the Qur'an of those people who go on a boat. And they go on the boat expecting to do trade and expecting to buy and sell. They go onto this boat and when they go out to sea, there is a great storm. And Allah describes in the Qur'an how the waves are coming over them like the roof of a tent. Can you imagine? Huge waves crashing down on top of you. Now, for a bit, the human being will think, okay, the boat is going to save me. The boat is well built, the boat will save me. Or maybe they think the captain will save me. But when the boat starts to disintegrate, to break apart, and the captain gets washed over shore, what do they do? What do they do? They start calling upon the Creator. They start saying, oh God, help me. And when they say, oh God, it is not the point, the name is not important, whether they say God or Allah or uh, Huda or whatever. No, the name is not important. It's the concept that is important. What are they calling to conceptually? Conceptually, in their minds, they are calling upon the being which they know instinctively has power over everything in the universe. 